I want to talk to you about five maps that I hope we can consign to history. And the inspiration for this talk actually comes from my parents' attic. So a few months ago, I was rifling through their record collection and I happened upon a particular record that caught my eye. And it caught my eye because there looked to be some kind of scientific data visualization on the back. It looked like the sort of thing you see in a journal article. And on closer inspection, it was shown to be a uh, graphic showing the impact of nuclear war and what the fallout would be in the event of a nuclear catastrophe. And I thought this was a very niche thing. Maybe it's some kind of left field band that had featured such a graphic. But in fact, it adorned the back of one of the biggest selling singles of the 1980s. It's Frankie Goes to Hollywood's Two Tribes. And the whole record is about nuclear catastrophe and the, and the futility of nuclear war. And the reason I struggled to engage with this was because I've never had to worry about nuclear war. This record came out three years before I was born. And although the threat hasn't completely disappeared, it's a threat that is diminishing. And so it got me thinking, what maps and graphics have I created that someone may discover years from now that we hope have been consigned to history? And some of the biggest challenges we face are charted by the Bulletin for Atomic Scientists. They have this thing called the Doomsday Clock where the hands get closer or further to midnight depending on the threats that the world faces. And around the middle of the 1980s, about the time when uh, the Frankie Goes to Hollywood single was released, we hit a peak in the number of nuclear missiles uh, in circulation. And that peak started to decline and was associated with a movement away from midnight. Now, what's happened in the last couple of decades is a huge shift back towards midnight. And in fact, we're only about 100 seconds from midnight, according to the bulletin's doomsday clock. And the reason for that is climate change and our inability to address the climate crisis. So thinking about what I wanted to talk about, I thought it's only natural that the climate crisis should form the topic for the five maps I think we need to consign to history. And we all know the challenge. We know the challenge is a warming world. And this is actually a whole page of maps that shows the warming stripes of the planet from 1890 to 2019. And what we can see is a trend from blues to reds as the planet warms. And we can actually zoom in and we can see the detail here and the detail is showing us two things. Firstly, we have a general warming trend. So as I say, 1976, things are looking quite blue and then they get progressively more orange and red. But the second thing, and this is important, is that we've always had heat waves. We've always had blips of heat, warm conditions every year. But the difference is those warm conditions were isolated events. They happened in, in relatively small areas of the Earth's surface, and they were surrounded by what we would consider normal, uh, slightly cooler temperatures. But today, the last decade, what's happening is those areas of high heat, those heat waves, are actually sitting on top of already warm temperatures. And so we have that general trend and that specific one. And I hope that decades from now, we start to reverse this. Now it's this heat that's fueling the second map I wanted to show. And it shows a year of vegetation fires on planet Earth. And what's so uh, scary about this map, of course, is that the vegetation fires are increasing. They're increasing in size and extent and in geographic locations. So we're seeing fires burning throughout the winter in the Arctic and then reigniting in a big way in the summer. We're seeing the effects of these on the east coast of Australia, the west coast of North America, and even in the Amazon rainforest. And so when we look at this map decades from now, I hope that it marks a moment where we realized that things had got as bad as they could get and we're managing to make some changes to help at least limit the spread of these fires. 
My third is pollution. Now this is an image taken on a summer's day in July 2019 and it shows the nitrogen dioxide levels in the atmosphere. It was taken from a satellite sensor. And what these sensors can reveal is the sources of this kind of pollution and also how it spreads and moves across the planet. And in this case, we're focusing on, on Europe. And there's many stories in this map. We can see how in Marseille, there is an orange and brown smudge that's created by the cruise ships that emit their dirty fuel. We can see how the pollution is hitting the Alps and can't get over them, so it pools in northern Italy. And we can see how the industrial region of northwest Europe is generating emissions that are mixing with the shipping in the channel and the flights overhead and then sitting on top of the United Kingdom, which sometimes has the worst pollution, particularly in its cities uh, of any country in Europe. We know where the sources of these pollutants are and we can do something to stop them. Now, my fourth map is a prediction. And what it shows is the impacts of sea level rise on the Marshall Islands and specifically the city and island of Majuro, which is the capital. Now, in dark blue on this map is the prediction that these areas will be inundated by the sea by 2100, or at least there's a high degree of certainty that that will happen. Now, the Marshall Islands and islands like them are actually being hit twice. So they're low lying. So as the sea levels rise, they're, they're the first to flood. But the second aspect is that the sea levels are not rising uniformly. We actually get variations in height. So in some places they're rising quicker than others. And that happens to be in the part of the specific Pacific that some of these islands exist in. So it's a, it's a doubly challenging problem for the people that live there. And as I say, if this map is seen in 30, 40, 50 years from now, I'm really hoping that it's an incorrect prediction because we were able to pull it back in time before the people of the Marshall Islands lost their home. My final map is probably the one that most took my breath away when I created it. And it shows the breakup of the Larsen ice shelf over a number of years that caused this uh, enormous iceberg to break off and spiral across the Southern Ocean before it hit the shallow waters around South Georgia and began to break up in Christmas time 2020. And why this took my breath away is because it seemed to me like the canary in the coal mine it was a slow motion uh, version of seeing the planet break up before our very eyes. And it made me think, I can't just sit back and watch this happen. I have to do something to help prevent it. And so I wanted to leave you on a, a, a thought. So these maps that I've shown you uh, just now have come from a book called Atlas of the Invisible that I co-authored uh, with a designer named Oliver Uberti. Now, books are physical objects. They're tangible things. They sit on shelves. They'll be put in someone's attic. And I hope that just as I went through the attic of my parents, my kids and grandkids might be going through my attic, and they'll find something. They'll find this book. They'll take the dust off, and they'll open it, and they'll have the same reaction that I had when I first saw that Frankie Goes to Hollywood single. And they'll think, what is this about? It's actually about a moment in history when people change things. Things got worse, they changed it, and now things are better. And so the, the quote I want to leave you on is by a geographer, John K. Wright. And he wrote this in the midst of the Second World War, when the world is featuring an enormous challenge back then. And he said that you cannot navigate a ship without charts, however, does not mean that you cannot navigate it by charts alone. Rudders and helmsmen are also necessary. And what John Wright is saying here is it's no point in creating the maps, putting them in a book and setting them to one side. They only work if people take those maps and do something about them and use them to navigate their way to a better future. Thank you very much.